we vilified the only thing on earth that is the most healthy for us. That was to protect industries and special interests like the sugar companies and the processed food industries because they're the ones perpetuating this. You know, the sugar companies invented the idea that cholesterol caused heart disease. No serious scientist independently came up with that idea. That was invented by the sugar companies. They paid off different people like Ansel Keys and others from Harvard to perpetuate this lie. That's a big part of what I do is, is preventative medicine. I mean, you can sort of think of it as prospective medicine, looking forward and trying to head things off before they become a problem or um, you know, as, as opposed to prospect, uh, um, uh, retrospective medicine, which is, you know, it's the difference between trying to avert uh, a, a train wreck as opposed to just going out there and, you know, sweeping up the pieces and, and burying the bodies. It's, uh, it's a little late after, after it gets to that point. Uh, so you want to try to get these things early and stop them from being a problem in the first place, or maybe you know, st prevent them from even, even uh, having early signs of any sort of issue and disease. And the same things that are going to prevent something from occurring 20 years down the track is also going to help treat that, that issue once you already have it established. So it actually, preventative medicine is, is really the only kind of medicine we should uh, be practicing because it not only treats it prevents things from happening but it also treats things so it can be both prospective and retrospective if you get people early then it stops it from ever being an issue if you get them late when it's already a problem it's it solves the problem and so that's i mean there are some things that aren't related to diet but fully 90 percent of mortality or uh, mortalities in australia and america and europe and 74 percent worldwide are the so-called non-communicable chronic diseases, the diabetes, the heart disease, the cancers, the uh, autoimmunities, all these sorts of things. Um, those can be entirely preventable or reversible with dietary changes. So we can get rid of 90% of the issues that doctors treat nowadays. And we can treat them retrospectively or prospectively. And we can get back to that 10% that we actually really need. The accidents, the emergencies, the, the poisonings, the pregnancy and childbirth, the you know, you know, infectious disease, congenital and, and um, genetic issues, you know, real medicine that we've been practicing for thousands of years. And now we have technologies that we can ha make huge advances towards helping these things. You know, if someone comes in, they break their spine. You can, you can relieve the spinal uh, cord pressure. You get them walking again. You can you know, fuse their spine in ways that we couldn't do before. And we can get people walking again. We can get people um, back the use of their legs. We can replace their hips. We can do all these sorts of amazing things. And, you know, th those are all fantastic, but then it, they're just being completely overshadowed by all these non-communicable chronic diseases. So I think that the, the preventative approach takes care of 90% of this. And we can get back as doctors to dealing with the real issues that the body can't sort out itself. Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much for that, Anthony. Uh, so just for our listeners, what do you eat on a daily basis? Yeah, um, um, mostly mostly meat. So um, just generally red meat, the rumen in animals, try you know, to have the, you know, the rumen uh, that they can uh, ferment and break down the plants that they're eating. And so they, they break down those toxins and uh, extract the nutrients very easily before they absorb them. Other animals, such as pigs, chicken, fish, um, if they're eating the, their natural diet, that's probably fine. But if, uh, if they're being fed corn and soy and all this sort of other sort of stuff, they're, they're just going to absorb that. And then their liver is going to try to detoxify it. So it can get into the meat and it's not necessarily ideal. I don't seem to have a problem with it, but people with autoimmunity, especially to really try to stick to the ruminant animals. And that's pretty much it. Some eggs as well, but, uh, it's just meat. I, I, I haven't eaten anything except meat in over six years now. And uh, in my early 20s, I did it for five years. So, you know, all told, it's been 11 years of just meat, meat and eggs. That's it. Hey, everyone. Really happy to announce a new sponsor of the show for everyone in Australia. And that is Stockman Steaks, who deliver steaks and other meats direct to customer, delivering high quality grass fed and grass finished pasture raised beef and other meats frozen to your door. They have high fat options for those of us on a keto carnivore diet, and you can even order grass fed and finished beef fat trimmings that you can fry up and add to your meal for the extra fat 
with high omega-3 fatty acids in it. If you're in Australia, unfortunately they're not shipping outside of Australia at the moment, but hopefully they'll be moving into other markets soon. So in Australia, you can use code CHAFEE for a free order of beef mints or another free gift as it may change from time to time. So just go down to stockmansteaks.com.au today and place your order now. Thanks guys. I eat a lot of fat. I try to get a, a majority of my calories from fat. So something like 70 to 80% calories from fat. So that's like two grams of fat for every one gram of protein. So it's very high fat meat based diet. And that's very key. You know, you need that fat. The main thing is that this is what humans are designed to eat. This is our biologically appropriate diet. And like all animals, you know, if you, if you eat outside of your biological design, you're going to get sick. And that's what we see in animals. Uh, including humans. And so it's just very important to do that. You don't need a bunch of studies to tell you what to eat. What you do is you look at what an animal eats naturally. And for humans, that's meat. That's high fat meat. People say, well, we were eating wild game and that's very lean. Mm, the smaller the animal gets, the leaner it gets. Sure. But the megafauna that we've been eating for millions of years up until about you know, 10, 15,000 years ago when they died out in some sort of mass extinction event, I don't think we hunted them out to extinction because they all went extinct at the same time on every continent everywhere. So that would be a very big coincidence that everybody hunted them out at the exact same time. I don't buy that. So there's some sort of cataclysmic event that wiped them out and in all likelihood. And But before that, we were eating this mastodon, these giant sloths, cave bears, the Inuits are still eating seals and polar bears and whales are extremely high fat. So we actually were eating very fatty meat. We were not eating very lean. We were eating very fatty meat. And it wasn't until the megafauna died out that we actually had to turn to agriculture because we weren't able to get all our, uh, as much energy we needed from fat. And so we needed to, to get milk, get butter, get sort of raised bigger animals like uh, you know, bison, cows, horses, these sorts of things, because they'll have, they'll have more, uh, sort of internal fat. And, um, and then, uh, yeah. And then dairy, you know, dairy was very high in fat. And so that's why we did that. And then getting, you know, some nutrition from carbohydrates and, and, uh, agriculture and things like that, because you need, you need another energy source besides protein. When we're cleaving protein just for energy, you actually, it's not really good for you. You need another, a major source of your energy needs to come from something besides protein. Um, even if that's carbohydrates and that's how we, we ended up switching to that, um, in agricultural, uh, times. So, uh, we need the fat, the fat's very important and you just want to eat to your biological design and just understand that, that this isn't bad for us. We vilified the only thing on earth that is the most healthy for us. And that was to protect industries and special interests uh, like the sugar companies and the fast food industries and the, well, not necessarily fast food, but the, the, the processed food industries, because they're the ones perpetuating this. You know, the sugar companies invented the idea that cholesterol caused heart disease. No serious scientist independently came up with that idea that was invented by the sugar companies. And then they paid off different people like Ansel Keys and others from Harvard to perpetuate this lie. But it was invented by them. And that was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association in 2016, detailing how they paid off three Harvard professors to falsify data and publish fraudulent studies to make it appear as if cholesterol caused heart disease when it was more likely to be sugar. Because there were serious scientists who independently came up with the idea that sugar was causing increased uh, prevalence in heart disease, which is a brand new disease in the 20th century. It almost didn't exist before then. And um, it, it's now the number one killer in the world where it, it, there was a scattered handful of case reports of people dying from heart attack and heart, uh, heart disease in, throughout Europe. There wasn't a single case in America before 1912. Not, not one, right? So, and then in 1930s, it became the number one killer in America. So uh, we were eating more meat in the early 1800s or in the 1800s than we were in the early 1900s. In fact, in the 1920s and 30s, we were eating the least amount of meat in 200 years of American history. And that's when heart disease became the most, uh, the biggest killer in, in America, right? Nothing in the 1800s, we're eating way more meat. And then the number one killer when we're eating the least amount of meat. So there isn't even a correlation 
between meat consumption and, and uh, cardiovascular disease. So it's just really important for people to understand that meat does not cause harm. It does not cause cancer. It does not cause diabetes. It does, in fact, we, we're curing diabetes. We've proven that in clinical trials, we can reverse diabetes with a high fat animal-based diet. So you remove diabetes, you reverse diabetes, you can help cancer patients, you can help cardiovascular patients. I mean, this does not cause any of these problems that it's been blamed for. And it's just really important that people understand that even if you don't want to go full carnivore, at least don't be afraid of meat because it's the healthiest, most bioavailable nutrients that you will ever come across in your entire life. And it is vital for your health and especially the health of your children and your and the elderly who have to have proper nutrition or they will not develop properly and they will decline and they will die early, horrible, senile deaths. And that is that is one of the biggest tragedies that has ever uh, faced this earth. It has these, this, these bad, fraudulent nutritional uh, guidelines and recommendations have killed more people than Stalin, Mao, Hitler, Lenin, and all the other despots of the 20th century, Attila the Hun, they've killed more people than any other uh, despot mass murderer has uh, in certainly in the last several centuries. So this is a major, major problem of people dying prematurely after decades of disease and spending trillions of dollars a year treating diseases that simply should not exist and didn't exist even a hundred years ago. So sort of maybe more than one final thought, but it all sort of ties together. But, um, you know, I just think, I just obviously feel very passionate about this because this, that this has killed a lot of people. And it, um, you know, I, you just think back to your family members and, uh, and people that have died of these sorts of Ill, illnesses and suffered with these diseases their whole life. And it, and it, and it, it should bother you. It should piss you off. It should light a fire under you. And it certainly has for me. And so that's why I feel so strongly about getting this message out there to people.